How does data go from one side to another wirelessly, specifically using infrared? Let's talk about that. One of the oldest ways to transfer data from one side to another digitally is using infrared, using light. This is basically how remote control, uh, TV remote control work. This is a really, really old standard. It's been around for a very long time and it's still used today in your uh, TV remote. Now, because it's infrared, it's light. It's an invisible light. So basically your, your remote is transmitting some light that is seen by the TV on the other side and this is how the data is being transferred. Now, this is why if you don't point the remote at your TV, it would not work because it's light. If you point it at the wall, it might work because the light is reflecting off, off, off the wall. If you have more of a modern, um, some of the remote controls on some like those uh, TV uh, uh, sticks, for example, are they use Bluetooth. And those, it doesn't matter where the stick is at, it, it's behind the, the, the TV, for example, you could be in a different room, and it would still work because this is using uh, some kind of wireless technology, probably Bluetooth. If not, it's, it's, it's not using light, it's not using infrared. Now we already said infrared, it's why infrared, why not just a light? Just because it's, it would be pretty annoying if it's using like some kind of light. So it's like really bright and it's, you know, every time you press the remote, you see the light. That would still work, but that would not be very efficient. And the, the beauty of using infrared is, is it works, it's there, but to our eyes, humans, it's, it's invisible, we, we don't see it. Now, how does that work? There is already infrared and light in the surrounding environment around your uh, remote and your TV, or for that matter, any two things that are transmitting uh, data uh, using infrared. I'll give you an example right here. So I have uh, two brain pads and they have two infrared um, uh, click modules plugged in uh, and each one has a transmitter and a receiver. So the transmitter will be uh, this one right here, this is basically an LED, but it's this LED transmitted uh, infrared. Uh, so there's like, you know, uh, colors are different frequencies, red, light, blue, whatever the color might be. Um, this one is in on the infrared side, so that's the frequency, the light frequency that transmits at, and we wouldn't see it. Now there's also a receiver, this black one right here. And it's uh, it's black because it's uh, it's this is it's, it's a filter. It's not really black. It's like really really dark red. So it's uh, it filters out the other light to help the receiver only see infrared, not seeing the other light. Now this is only seeing infrared, so that helps as far as the receiver. So now I transmit from one side. Whatever number I'm transmitting here is received on the other side. So there's no connection between the two. The USB cable is only used for power. So the only way the data is coming across is through light. So if I cover up uh, the, the transmitter, you see like the numbers go up on this side, but they don't make it to the other side. So I'm like 80. So, but now if I move my hand, now the numbers go across to the other side. Ideally, these need to be facing each other. When they're not facing each other, it still works because the light bounces off the walls or the surrounding and it would still work. Now there's still a problem here because even though uh, if you're transmitting light and there's, you figured out some protocol to how the pattern is transmitted, like Morse code for example, so there's like on, off, off, on, that means like a number and that's, the receiver understands it. The problem here is with all the, the light that is, uh, the, the surrounding noise that is, that's happening, it would not really work. Uh, uh, so, like for example, there is like the lights that are in your room. Those are um, running at, uh, let's say, 60 hertz or 50 hertz. There's already noise that you do not see that is in existence. So, how do we come around this problem? Well, this is very similar to actually uh, radio. Uh, the way it works, there is a carrier frequency. And the carrier frequency is used to transmit and then the receiver only accepts things that come on that specific carrier frequency. I'll explain this in further details. So let me show you here. So let's say we want to transmit the signal. 
that's what I want to transmit. Now, doing it without carrier frequency, it would be very hard because the receiver is going to see a lot of spike and noises on, on the receiving end. To make this work, I would have to add a carrier frequency. And the carrier frequency typically on infrared is, is between 30 and 40 uh, kilohertz. Uh, I think the most common one is 32 or 30, uh, I think 38 kilohertz. So that's more uh, common. Now, let's say this is carrier frequency, whatever, it might, whatever that frequency might be. Uh, so let's say this is the carrier frequency. The carrier frequency be, will be, it has to be a lot faster than what data you're transmitting at. So let's say this is the carrier frequency. It goes on and on and on and on. So this will be happening over and over. So this is your carrier frequency. Now, the carrier frequency combined with what you're transmitting will create what the actual signal that is being transmitted. So between these two, so low means nothing, one means transmit, this will end up looking like this. So combining these two, nothing, and then carrier frequency, and then nothing, carrier frequency, nothing, and then there's a small one right here. So between what you actually want to transmit, the carrier frequency, this is what you receive on the other end. Now, the, the receiver has this filter built in. That's really nice about the receiver. So when you go by a, uh, an infrared receiver, which is this black component right here, if you go on the internet and you, you, know, you get an infrared receiver, the, uh, you, will, you will specify what carrier frequency it will filter at. And that's what you need. You don't want something without a filter. Uh, this will have, uh, th the, uh, the component will have three pins, power and ground, because this is actually has circuit inside that filters out the carrier frequency. So there's power and ground and out. Pretty simple. This is what it sees, and this is what you will get out, as far as the receiver. Uh, the, the receiver. Now, as far as this transmitter, typically you wouldn't buy a transmitter that has a built-in carrier frequency, because it's pretty easy to generate carrier frequency, like using PWM, for example. So you would, uh, you would enable PWM at 38 kilohertz, just for example, and then from that PWM, you would turn it on and off at specific time to generate the, the signal with the carrier frequency, and then the receiver will filter out on the receiving end, and that's what's happening here. So the transmitter is just an LED, but then there is a, in the back end, we are generating this signal using PWM or in software to combine the two, and then on the receiving end, it's getting filtered out. Radio works very similarly, but it's a lot more complex than uh, two little components that you can just get off the internet and wire up to any microcontroller. So next time you're trying to build a project and you want an easy way to connect the two sides wirelessly, consider infrared. It's a really old standard, but it beautifully works. Talk to you later.